In today's video, we're going to be taking a look here at these current conditions and diving into the upcoming pattern where we finally have some solid signs at some cold air later on in the pattern. Now, if that will pan out or not is still up for debate because we have seen these models show this from time to time where it doesn't pan out. We also have seen them show it where it does pan out. So it is the flip of a coin still over the coming days that will sway in either direction, probably uh, be more confident in either way. Now, as we take a look here at the West Coast, we can see there is another storm system moving on shore. Again, big surprise. This seems to happen about every day. I mean, then we have kind of the end of our kind of storm that we've had here in the eastern United States taking place. We still have this warm front complex there. And the cold front swinging through that cold front is now fully offshore. But this is leading towards warm air surging still for southern New England and a lot of those areas below that uh, warm front. And then we have our cold front swinging behind. This is leading towards some snowfall here for the very far interior northeast. So we see upstate New York as well as the Finger Lakes regions and then very far northern Maine as well there. And then plenty of Canada seeing some snowfall here as well as you can see. Uh, we can tell that the flow of things here is Deep Arctic air basically just surging southward, far southward here behind all of this. So our jet stream is doing about this at this point. And this is a very extreme pattern that will not last too long. Uh, there was a lot of potential here as this cold front comes through for a low de to develop here and have a snowstorm take place. It just did not pan out like a lot of things have not this winter so far. Let's just zoom in here. We can see things are moving generally northward here across the northwest. So we see four portions of the Pacific Northwest there, the coastline. We do see some more moderate precipitation taking place as well as far inland here for uh, Washington, Idaho, and portions of Oregon. Then for the California coast, especially near San Francisco Bay and north of that area, we do see that there is moderate to heavy precipitation taking place depending on where you're at. And this will lead towards snowfall again for the Sierra Nevadas like we've seen all year long so far. This will continue on uh, later on as the showers kind of move inland. But we can see that these are starting to really work their way into the San Francisco Bay Area and areas south of there. Um, we can see that for the northern California coast here, we can also see some more moderate to heavy precipitation taking place. Even some snowfall here in the higher elevation areas here. Uh, so we're seeing plenty of these types of uh, just effects from the storminess. And we're going to see a lot of this move on shore to these areas south of San Francisco as well uh, that will be happening a little bit later on. Now as we head downstream we can see that there is some snow showers, rain showers as well for some warmer spots here inland in the middle of that trough. Definitely some wintry weather happening here along the Appalachian Mountains here. West Virginia, Virginia, Kentucky, Tennessee, and North Carolina seeing some snowfall there along the mountain ranges. And really the main story, though, is up here in Maine and surrounding states. We can see some rainfall again south of that warm front. Uh, the warm front, realistically, is probably much more uh, near the freezing line, I would say. And that cold front is a little bit more advanced than we're seeing right there as well. But we're seeing this warm air surging northward behind that uh, warm front and it's really the areas behind that cold front that are going to feature snowfall here as you can see uh, where we're going to have this cold air really surging southward here so we're seeing snowfall across the finger lakes regions the uh, kind of adirondacks region as well here in northern uh, new york there as well as areas in northern vermont we're seeing some snowfall rainfall earlier but that has switched over to some heavy snowfall as time has moved on and then very far northern Maine, we can see that rain snow line is progressing northward with the warm front, but we still see the snowfall holding on for very far northern Maine where heavy snowfall has been falling for multiple hours now. Now what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to move on and we're just going to talk about the upcoming pattern because again, we do see these models more consistently now showing cold in the long range, certainly something to track. Now here we are taking a look at our European model. We can see all of the storminess there along the eastern United States. Let's just take this towards approximately tomorrow afternoon. I want to just get much further than we are now. Uh, we can see this low develops but well offshore as this trough is kind of tilted in the opposite direction you want to see it really. It's tilted offshore which is going to lead towards this storm obviously being very far away from the coast. But what we could see is this, this low kind of track closer to the coast as it heads northward. Uh, now we do see that there also is some storminess again out west. Again, that Sierra Nevada mountain range, they're seeing some snowfall building in. 
as we just continue this on, we see that happen where this low gets a little bit closer to the coast and we see some snowfall here for southern New England. Very exclusive event taking place there. Also southern uh, Rockies seeing some of this snowfall there. Uh, as we reach about Monday the 16th, what we see is our next low pressure system developing over Iowa there. Uh, perhaps a cold front look, warm front here. We can see if that does take place, but this one never really organizes that well. Uh, it's a little bit too progressive, and I feel like it just kind of slides away. So there's no real strong cold front or warm front. I believe this is going to end up being more of a showery event, honestly. So all of this activity here in the eastern United States, even though we have a 996, I don't think this is going to be as consistently convective as we've seen with some of our other storms so far. Uh, now, our next storm is already kind of located here, and we have another one near uh, Canada. So there is a, a train of storms heading in. We see this next one is definitely the opposite of that one I just described. We see a clear and defined cold front there, clear and defined warm front here. With some snowfall to the backside here across states like Kansas, Iowa, Nebraska, Missouri, and some surrounding states as well with very heavy snowfall. That's Wednesday into Thursday. That'll be the 18th into the 19th. So as we've crossed over the halfway mark of the month into the second half, that is what we're going to be dealing with. Severe weather underneath is almost uh, certain with this type of a setup. Uh, probably the first day will be Wednesday here on the 18th where we see a lot of this activity surging in from our Gulf states and probably already a cold front developing here. So as that cold front swings through that warm and humid conditions, that's what we're going to be dealing with there. Very, very interesting stuff. Uh, and obviously snowfall on the northern end. As we progress towards Thursday, where we're going to be watching is more this area and here for that severe weather underneath. Again, cold fronts right here. Your warm fronts approximately right here. And you're going to get this warm sector. So I think the severe weather actually could stretch further north here in this warm sector. Your warm front being there, cold front being here. All right, still snowfall in the northern end. Wisconsin now getting involved as well as Michigan uh, and Minnesota. So we're seeing some of these upper Midwest and Great Lakes states getting involved. And then this passes through all the way to the east coast where if we're to draw it up, we have a cold front here. It's probably more actually in the heart of the precipitation, somewhere in there, and then a warm front in here. So we do get uh, a lot of warm air out ahead of this kink in the in the, um, in the the frontal boundaries there as well, which could bring some interesting weather also, but still a very similar setup to what we've been seeing for most of this year, and I wouldn't be surprised if we have another thunderstorm event here along the southeast, which I was saying uh, the Carolinas there and Virginia could see some thunderstorms last night, and sure enough, that did occur. We actually saw an area of convection set up there, so that did uh, set up pretty much as predicted. Unfortunately, that tornado outbreak was devastating, um, definitely overperformed. Uh, kind of, we mentioned yesterday morning that it seemed like it was overperforming, and I think, honestly, we have, I, at last time I checked, 45 tornado reports, absolutely devastating and just terrible, terrible, terrible stuff down there especially in the deeper south. We saw a lot of that activity um, and the southeast in general. I mean, really, I think it overperformed the, the enhanced risk. I, I think that definitely could have been a moderate risk uh, event for sure. <clears throat> Certainly turned into a terrible tornado outbreak, and hopefully it's not a sign of things to come uh, this year. We do see that this storm eventually moves out, and this is when that cold is potentially on the way. We see this kind of a look here which this is just primed because we see the tilt is just like this, but it's kind of getting turned like this. So we see this um, balance here where it is going to turn that tilt to where it will be like this over the eastern United States, and a lot of that cold will be taking aim here at the east. So we're probably going to be seeing a lot of this in just a second. As we continue this on, we can see sure enough that is what takes place. We see that, that trough. Totally takes aim at the east here on our European model. Again, the most accurate model out there. This still is very long range though, so we'll take it with a grain of salt. But the jet stream ends up doing this pure and textbook positive PNA look, which I know a lot of you have been waiting for. And this immediately sends the cold air into the eastern United States. And this is why we've put an emphasis this year, if you've noticed, you probably couldn't have missed it, on the positive PNA being such a, a big factor. We've talked about that all fall, starting in September when we saw that colder temperature start up. We had a cold fall overall because it's featuring this positive PNA look. We've been talking about it all winter and honestly moving forward. 
I've seen now this year especially how big of a factor this is, and I'm, I'm going to continue to use it as one of my biggest determining factors in upcoming patterns. We can see this uh, trough here will also feature snow showers, uh, definitely worth noting. Uh, the the kind of icing on the cake here, or the salt in the wound, I guess would be a better word to better way to put it in general, is we see all this storminess, right? This crazy, crazy, crazy storminess. And the second the cold takes aim at the east, things are looking much quieter. We do have a bit of a minor storm taking place here in the northwest, but there is like nothing going on anymore the second that trough takes aim at the east. So hopefully for cold and snow lovers, that is not how things line up because that is just uh, definitely um, unfortunate and, and very ironic, I would say. Now, the GFS model, we're going to take a look here as well. Uh, now, this is the one model out of the three that we're going to take a look at that actually doesn't really show the cold moving into the east. And it was right around, I want to mention as well, I forgot to mention this, we've been talking about that 20th being, uh, this is back to the European model, by the way, I'm all over the place today. Um, right at the 20th, we see this storm system move through this major storm system. And then that is the kind of benchmark there for that pattern change right after the 20th. And we've been saying that for a few weeks now. And certainly that still appears to be uh, a very interesting thing to note, but very much so uh, the truth at this point. Now, what we see on the GFS model is right around the 20th, we still have a major storm. It's very different looking, honestly, than what we saw in the European, but it still is a major storm. And we don't get the cold in with that one, but what happens is we get another major storm right around the 25th, and this does briefly bring that cold in, as you can see. Not really a positive PNA look, but more like trough, you know, cold air from coast to coast up here, especially in the northern United States. A little bit more balanced towards the east, I would say here. But this is not a true, clearly not a true positive PNA big trough in the east look. This is a very messy, like, um, unconnected trough. And what this leads towards, not having that pure jet stream, is like no storms, as you can see, heading into the United States from the Pacific. And we get dried up, basically, uh, for the 20th through the 30th. So we see that here on the GFS model as well, worth noting. Now, the Canadian model, let's work our way through this. This has been the second most accurate model this year. Um, we reached the 20th with a major storm. Look at that. We get it here, too. So all three models do have a major storm heading into the United States or the eastern United States around this point. Something like this is what we would see. Uh, and then as we move on, look, that is the benchmark for a major trough in the east here on the Canadian model as well. And we have the snow showers as well. We've kind of noted on the channel how similar this Canadian model has been closely resembling the European model. It's been quite impressive, actually, and very, very worth noting. I mean, this is 10 days out. So to see a model this this close uh, to another is very interesting. But what we get here on the, the Canadian model is a little bit less of this positive PNA look. So that's not really there. And what we actually get is a storm system kind of diving south here along the west. And this might kind of turn the tides back towards the west if this is a little bit too much of a, of a strong feature here. Um, again, the European model, we end things and, and we see very, very positive PNA look at the end of the model run. Clearly a positive PNA here. Uh, we get to the same point, so 0Z zero zero Monday, uh, let's see, right about here on the GFS model, and we see this snow system diving south before we even get the trough moved into the east. So it messes everything up there. And then right around that same point here on the end of the uh, Canadian model, we see almost the trough wanting to build into the west, but we still have this trough in the east. So it leaves us with, with a bit of a question mark. The jet stream is quite literally doing this, which is almost looking like a double trough, a trough in the west, trough in the east. And I think what we're going to have to do here on this Canadian model is actually take a look at our temperature anomalies. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty much even. We have this cold air mass down here in the southeast, and we also have one down there in the southwest. And actually, it's a little bit warmer along the north here. So very interesting pattern here from the Canadian model. We're going to take that one with a grain of salt because I think this is a very rare look, to say the least. Uh, now, the European Ensemble model, as far as temperature anomalies go, has this brief cool down that we're going to see. So the cold front just came through. This weekend's going to be a little bit cooler. By the time we're reaching Monday and Tuesday, though, we see the warm temperatures return here to the eastern United States as a whole. So we see this taking place. And out here, out west, we have a negative PNA. So that's forcing this warm air to move around this cold bubble, basically. Now, as time moves on, we see right around that 21st time frame, look, warm in the east, cold in the west, we start to see cold move into the east right after the 20th. 
Uh, now it's 50-50. This looks a lot like the Canadian model, actually, with that cold on both sides. So definitely has some ensemble support, which is pretty interesting. And then as time continues to move on, we see it just trends colder and colder um, here along the east. Still seeing that cold out west, according to this model. But I think what's interesting is this has no connection to the Arctic uh, here. As you can see, there's, there's this warm blocking happening here which is basically blocking any cold air from moving southward through this warm air mass. It's forcing it to go around. And what we see is there is cold air up here uh, in eastern Canada, and this is connecting here with this trough in the east. So if it does look like this, I feel like this would definitely favor the east being colder rather than the west because we have more of that Arctic connection. Uh, but only time will truly be able to tell. And you can see right by the end of it, the 28th here, we still have this cold look in eastern North America, but colder anomalies out west with less of a connection. So a negative PNA with cold in the east. And we did see this again, like I mentioned in yesterday's video, uh, we did see this in like October or November, I forget which month it was. So it is possible, um, but this is not as favorable as what we saw at the end of the European model where there would be warmer air building into the west. So a positive PNA, we would want to see warm out there and then a stronger trough here in the east this would be much more likely to give us something along uh, the eastern United States as far as snowfall. Anyway, that's it for this video. We're obviously at a big question mark, so be sure to subscribe. We're going to continue to track things daily as we always do. You can even hit the bell icon and click all videos so you get notified when we do upload so you never miss a video. Also, like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below, and I'll be seeing you guys in the next video.